Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crime perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. To the untrained observer, a crime and an accident may sometimes be indistinguishable, one from the other. But a district attorney must weigh each possibility in the scales of science and circumstances before drawing his conclusions. You take this case. It started on a farm near County Line at 2 a.m. As a man, awakened by a wave of nausea, staggers weakly from his bed. Oh. May... May, where are you? May, what's the matter? Why are you out of bed? Oh, Bob, I, I feel so sick. You're kind of funny myself. I was just filling a hot water bottle for my stomach. What can be the matter with me? Honey, you're white as a sheet. Come on, you better get back and lie down. I cannot stay on my feet without holding on to something. Well, you're all perspired. Bob, what can it be? Must be coming down with the flu or something. You know, your your kid brother acted kind of funny before he went to bed. Mm, I heard him get up about 11 o'clock complaining about his stomach ache. Let's see if he's awake. Here we... Here we better call the doctor. Throw an extra blanket over him. Harley, he's 20 years old. You can get a blanket if he needs it. Come on. We better get back to bed ourselves. Let me take me a minute to fix it, Bob. All right, you come on now. <clears throat> we'll call the doctor in the morning. Oh, I never felt so sick. Bob. What is it, man? What's the matter? Feel his face. Hmm? Feels so funny. Bob, he's so cold. He isn't even no, breathing. No, no, no. Don't get yourself excited. I'll wake him up. Walter. Walter, wake up. Walter! Wake up, Walter! Walter! Doctor. Oh, oh Bob, what's the matter with him? I'll, I'll go down and call the doctor right away. Bob! Bob, don't leave. Man. No. Hey, honey! I gotta get somebody to help. I gotta get downstairs to the phone. I I can't make it. Chester's in here, Chief. 
bathroom right off the master bedroom. Mm-hmm. Well, it all looks harmless enough, Harrington. Home remedies, first aid materials. Lab boy seen these? Yep. Took samples from each bottle for analysis. Anything? Nope. See, it's got to be poison, though. Three bodies, no sign of violence, no weapon. I know. How long did the medical examiner figure they'd been dead? Oh, since sometime night before last. Long time. Did the lab men check the garbage cans and the refuse containers? Yeah. No empty bottles of any kind. Just a few cans, a jar, vegetable peelings, you know, things like that. Well, something killed them. Better have another look around downstairs. How long ago were the bodies taken into town? Oh, about three hours. Autopsy report should be ready pretty soon, then, unless the doc runs into trouble. Yeah, well, I figured he'd want it as soon as possible, so I asked him to send it out with Miss Miller as soon as it was finished. Good. I think that the... There's a car outside now. Might be her. No, that's a man's knock. Come in. Which one of you is Garrett? I am. Who are you? My name is Sid Mack. I own half this farm. I was uh, Farragut's partner. I just want to find out one thing. I want to know who did this. If we knew that, we wouldn't be here trying to find out, Mr. Mack. I just want to make sure that whoever did it doesn't get away with it. You can post a $5,000 reward for the killer in my name. Make it ten. Make it anything I got, but get him. We don't need rewards for that, mister. What we need is information. You said you own half this farm, Mr. Mack? Yes. And you haven't been here since the night before last? I don't live on the place. It was just an investment for me. I set Farragut up here. I got a big hardware store over in Amityville. I live there. I see. Do you know anybody who might have had any reason for wanting Farragut and his family out of the way? Hmm? Out of the way like this? Why, it would have to be a madman. Squad car just turned into the road, Chief. That's Miss Miller. Looks like Simmons driving. Let her in. Right. We've been waiting for an autopsy report, Mr. Mack. Hi, Miss Miller. It may tell us which way to move. I hope so. We've got Dr. Miller's autopsy report, Mr. Garrett. Good. Could he establish the poisoning agent? There wasn't any. There wasn't any? You mean he couldn't make an analysis? No, sir. There just wasn't any deliberate introduction of a poison. All three deaths were accidental. Well, let me see that report. <laughs> Doc must have missed something this time, Chief. No, no. He didn't miss anything, Harrington. The deaths were caused by botulism. Botulism? What's that? The result of improper home canning of food. The report shows that the Farragut's made their last meal of green beans, potatoes, and canned sausage meat. The bacteria was unmistakable. It was the home canned sausage meat. Well, I guess in a way we can be thankful, Chief. It's nice to know it wasn't murder. In another way, I almost wish it were. Mr. Garrett. No, don't misunderstand me. I'm afraid we've got a greater and a much more dangerous job on our hands than just finding a killer. I don't follow you, Chief. We've been all over the house, Harrington. The kitchen, the pantry, everywhere. There's nothing in the house that's home canned. And no equipment for home canning. Hey, that's right. All we found was one empty jar on the kitchen drain board. Farm women do pass out samples of their home canning to friends and neighbors, Mr. Garrett. That jar might have been a gift. <laughs> Quite a gift. Like a stick of dynamite with a lighted fuse. What you're trying to say is that somebody around here might have a pantry full of poison and not know it. And that's exactly right, Mr. Mack. The Farragut's are dead. But dozens of others may die the same way unless we find out where that sausage meat came from and fast. Harrington, yep. Get all available local police on this with a couple of squads sent out from the city. I want the sheriff and all his available manpower, too. Right. Fan them out for a 20-mile radius. I want direct contact with anybody in the area who can't be reached by phone. See if anybody they can reach gave the Farragut a jar of sausage meat. Get right on it. I'll have it set up in 20 minutes. Miss Miller, you'll be in charge of the phone campaign. Special operators from the phone company. All that they can spare. All listings in this area to be called. Sir, where will you be? I'm back at the office. Praying that we don't get any more calls from the hospital or the morgue before we find the source of that jar. Ah. Don't 
put my car away, Phil. I may be going right out again. Sarge? <laughs> Sorry, you? Oh, there's an elevator. Hold it, Pete. Hey, please. You know, Chief, I don't think we missed more than a dozen people in the area you mapped out. Now, we know most of those are away on business or vacations. Yeah, I know. Five days. If only somebody'd come forward and admit that they came to stop the Farragut safe, then we'd know we were safe. Well, they may be afraid of being held responsible for the death. Oh, with the newspaper and the TV and the radio campaigns telling them that the inquest held the death as accidental? Just the same. People scare. There is something to wonder about. Oh, here we are. Thanks, Pete. Well, maybe one of the squads will left the report with this fellow. Uh, what time is it? Almost 10 p.m. Hello, hello. I thought you'd never get back. Sorry to keep you so late again, Miss Miller. Any news? No, I'm afraid not. Everybody's checked in. The reports are on your desk. Oh, thanks. You'd better go home. All right. Oh, there's a Mr. Carruthers in your office. He's been waiting to see you since about 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? That's a long wait in any league. Do you know who he is or what he wants? He wouldn't tell me. He said it's confidential. All right. I'll see him. You run along. Good night. Good night, Harry. Good night, night, Miss Miller. Well, let's have a look at the reports and see what the very patient Mr. Carruthers wants. Mr. Carruthers? Hmm? Oh, excuse me, I almost dozed up. No, it's all right. I'm Paul Garrett. This is my assistant, Mr. Harrington. Well, Anything we can help you with? Uh, yes, yes. I flew down from Hartford to see you, Mr. Garrett. I'm an investigator for the Eastern and Frontier Insurance Company. Mr. Garrett, we understand that you're still investigating the deaths of Robert and Mae Farragut and her brother, Walter McMahon. Well, we're trying to locate the source of the food that killed them, if that's what you mean. Then, uh, this isn't a criminal investigation. Uh, didn't you get a report on the inquest verdict? Yes, but, um, you can't blame us for being interested when a beneficiary submits a claim for $30,000. $30,000? Who's a beneficiary? Somebody who had a half interest in the Farragut farm. A man named Sid Mack. No wonder he could afford to offer a $10,000 reward, Chief. Yes. Uh, how long ago were those policies written, Mr. Carruthers? I have the dates right here. Let's see. Just a little over a year ago when Mack bought his interest in the farm. That's the main reason my company wanted to be certain about your investigation, Mr. Garrett. It's a routine matter, of course, for partners to insure each other, but... This I'm... involves Farragut's entire family. Yes, yes. However, since there's no criminal investigation, you'll have to honor Mr. Mack's claim. Thank you, time, Mr. Garrett. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Carruthers. I suggest you don't recommend payment of that claim just yet. But, uh, Mr. Garrett, you just said there's no criminal investigation. There wasn't a minute ago, but there is now. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the canned death... Here is an important message from our sponsor. And now, back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The coroner had listed as accidental the death of three persons all victims of botulism, a deadly food bacteria resulting from improper home canning. In trying to locate the source of the lethal food to prevent other fatalities, we came into contact with an insurance investigator who disclosed that the three dead people had been heavily insured and that the beneficiary was Sid Mack. Harrington and I got a search warrant for Mack's house. Mack had already left for his hardware store, but we were admitted by a hired girl who disappeared as we were making our search. Well, there's nothing in the kitchen, Chief. Well, there's nothing in the pantry either, Harrington. 
Now let's try to sell it. There's a light switch on the side there. Yeah. That hired girl scooted in a hurry, didn't she? Probably gone to Max Hardware store to tell him what we're doing. Yeah. Should have kept her here until we finished. If it doesn't make any difference, he'd know sooner or later. And if there's anything here, he won't be able to stop us from finding it. Ah, we're not going to find anything, Chief. If there was more of that contaminated food, he'd be stupid to have it around. And if he killed the Farragut's, he's not stupid. His whole job is too clever. No crime is perfect, though. If there was a crime, there's been a slip someplace. Let's move those crates. Okay. Nothing in these, Chief. Try the barrels. Hold it, Harrington. Somebody came in upstairs. Must be Mac. You down there, Garrett? That's right, Mr. Mac. What's the big guy here? Just having a look around. We've got a search warrant. You know so much about the law, maybe you're going to need more than a search warrant. I had a call from an insurance man named Carruthers this morning. And we had a call from him last night. That's why we're here. I've got a legitimate insurance claim. But you will stop payment of it. It'll be paid in due time. If it should be paid. Yeah. Let me tell you something, Garrett. Out at the farm, before we found out what killed the Farragut, I offered to put up everything I have as a reward, didn't I? Didn't I? Yes, Mac. You did. I'm glad you mentioned that, Mac. Because it just brought something to my mind. Something that's been trying to register ever since you made that offer. What? How long have you been in the hardware business? Look, 11 years. Why? Because when we told you the Farragut died from botulism, from food that wasn't canned properly, we almost had to draw you a blueprint. You didn't seem to know anything about it. How should I know anything about it? Don't you sell canning equipment at the hardware store? Well, I... Uh, we can ride over to the store, have a look at your stock. Do you sell it or don't you? All right, I sell canning equipment. Any hardware store does. I don't even know why I'm bothering to talk to you. You've got your warrant. Go ahead and search. But you're not going to find anything here. No canning equipment and no canned sausage meat. So go ahead. Search your heads off. He knows something about those deaths, Chief. He practically told us right to our faces. Yes, he's pretty sure of himself. He had not got a case, and he knows it. He could have brought canning equipment home from the store, then dished it when he was finished. Well, he'd need more than just equipment, Harrington. Huh? What? Pork. Hog meat. Quite a bit of it, too. Botulism bacteria isn't easy to cultivate, even deliberately. It would probably take quite a few tries before a poisonous batch developed. Well, we can check butcher shops. And the farms. He might have had one butchered at some farm around here. Yeah. Yeah. Means we got to comb this whole section of the county again. We either do that or... Or what? Or let a man get away with a triple murder. Uh... I'm sorry, Chief. I I didn't mean it the way it sounded. Let's go. Well, thanks, Mr. Foster. Bye. Any luck, Harrington? No, nothing. Just like the others. He, uh... He might have given me some kind of a lead, though. Like what? Well, it seems there's a place we missed when we were making our fish check around here. It's not really a farm. Well, what is it, then? It's a place over Dirt Road, about a half mile north of here. Forrester says there's an old woman living in a shack back there with her grandson. Her name is Annie Hibbs. Well, what did Forrester say about her? He had to think hard to remember the name Annie Hibbs, Chief. They usually call her by a nickname. They call her the pig woman. She raises hogs. That's our next stop. Forrester says she's kind of strange, you know. Grandson is feeble-minded. They had him at the state asylum for a while, but he was harmless, so they let him go. 
Then why are you looking so worried? Well, hogs aren't the only animals up there, Chief. Forrester says they've got the meanest dog in the state. And don't they keep him tied? Yeah, but he chews loose. And he hates everybody but the old lady and her grandson. Well, we've got to see those people. It's going to take more than a mean dog to stop us. Uh, yeah, there's a shack. Yeah, big gun, too. Look, huh? there's a man. Look. Oh, hey. Hey, mister. Wait a minute. He's taken off like a scared jackrabbit, Chief. That must be the grandson. Well, let him go for now. Why did you scare my grandson? What do you want here? Well, we'll, we'll tell you in a minute, but there's something else we'd like to know first. Uh, where's your dog? That's him. Buried there. The devil come for him. He's dead. The loop cries for him. He's afraid at night without the dog. Luke must be the grandson, Chief. Yeah. We uh, just came up here to see if you have any home canned sausage meat we might buy. No. I don't know nothing about canning. I see. Then you never gave any canned sausage meat to a family named Farragut. Uh, you know who they were, don't you? Uh, their farm is less than a mile from here. Yes. I know. Then you must also know they're dead. Not dead. Gone to glory. Uh, if you never gave anything to the Farragut's, uh, did you ever give or sell, you know, any of the canned sauces to a man named Sid Mack? Or even a live hog? Well, did you any? You've got a right to sell what you own. I don't know nobody by that name. He owns the hardware store in Emmettville. That's the only town near here. I never show him nothing. He never come up here. Oh, tell us that he it's never... It's all right, Harrington. Uh, thank you, Annie. That's all we wanted to know for now. Hey, don't you ever come back here again, ever! You ain't taking my grandson back to that place, here. You'll never get your coat if that dog was living. You ain't taking a look back to that place. She means the asylum, I think. Yes. Get over behind that brush. It's hard to tell with anybody like that, Chief. But she seemed to tighten up when you mentioned Sid Mack. Yes, he's been up here all right. Harrington, I've got a hunch. You stay here until I send the lad crew out. What for? I want to know what killed Annie's dog. Miss Miller? Oh, yes, Miss Kerr. No word from Harrington yet? No, sir. Radio division tried again about 45 minutes ago and still can't reach him. Or the lab car. The spot where that dog was buried was close enough to the road for them to hear the radio calls. You better order my car. I'll have to go. Chief, we got it. The whole case is cracked wide open. What happened? Botulism killed the dog, all right. We caught Annie's grandson. When we calmed him down, he told us the dog had died after Sid Mack had bought a jar of meat up for them to feed it. And the city is mine. And we still haven't got him cornered. Why not? Because Luke's background in the asylum and a smart defense attorney in court scaring him and confusing him, his story wouldn't hold up. Not even if we could produce a few more jars of the contaminated batch with Mac's fingerprints all over them? You've got them? More than 20 jars. Luke showed us where Mac buried them, about 100 yards from the dog's grave. So that's why radio division couldn't reach you. That's right, that's why. What time is it, Miss Miller? Ten past four. Good. Come on, Harrington. We can make Emmettville very nicely before Sid Mack closes his hardware store. got this time. An idea that's going to book you for murder, mister. Are you kidding? You can drop that smile, Mac. We've got the whole story from Luke Hibbs and his grandmother. <laughs> the words of a lunatic. Doesn't the law say something about a reasonable doubt, Mr. Garrett? Not when we've got some buried samples of your canning. With your fingerprints all over the jars. Just yours. So? 
Like you once said, I sell canning equipment. And if I sold those jars, I handled them. And my prints were on them. I think my story is good on that point. I don't. Because those prints were put on the jars after they were filled and the canning completed. Any prints that were on them before that would have been steamed off in the process of canning. And proving that to a jury won't be hard. You don't you raise that claw hammer, Mac. Don't make me put a bullet in you because, frankly, mister, I'm tempted. Uh, wait a minute. Don't let him talk like that, Mr. Garrick. I dropped it. I'm not resisting. All right. Just keep it that way. Let's go. You've got it all wrong, I tell you. It was all an accident. Save it for the jury. Hold it a second, Mac. You'd better lock up. You won't be coming back. Well, what can I do? What? What can I do to square this? <laughs> Bring three people who trusted you back to life. Go on. Lock it. This is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here's the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Sid Mack was tried and convicted on a charge of murder in the first degree. The death sentence was mandatory when the jury failed to recommend clemency. And now this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the files of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Philip H. Lawrence.